well first Holmes was born Then he got fat, bald, and tired, tired, tired What's up, Holmes? Beware your host, Jonathan Holmes. Thank you, Sinistar. As as always, wonderful to see you. And wonderful to see you, Jasper Byrne. You look great. Hey, hey nice to see you, Jonathan. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, we both have that thing. Yeah, yeah. I th- actually, you know what? I cheated. I put it up today because I knew you had it up. And I, I wanted to. <laughs> like, it's not normally up. <laughs> yeah, it looks very nice. I've got a things on my wall, so... Well, I was going to say, you don't seem like uh, you have a lot of your own stuff hanging on your walls. But maybe no, you I'm actually, yeah, it's not. It's a rented house still, so I'm, um, you know, not quite bought a house yet, like, off the, <laughs> off the game. Oh, but, gotcha. you know, <laughs> and um, you are in your studio where you record the music for your games, is that right? Yeah, and, and make the game, really, as well, yeah. Um, yeah, I just uh, sort of, uh, it's mainly a music studio, I guess, because I, I do work on the, the laptop sometimes just downstairs but yeah I, I do most of my work in, in here it's oh, supposed yeah. to be my daughter's room uh, but, but she's like still with us and I because we we've only got two bedrooms and you know I've, I've just sort of spread out with all my boys toys you know <laughs> well it's very uh, yeah, it's, clean and fun <laughs> that's a double um, keyboard I don't know if a lot of people knew or, or focus on the fact that you do the music for your games as well they can get the Lone Survivor soundtrack uh, yeah now, yeah I've, I've been branching into doing some music for other um, other games as well now like um, like Hotline Miami and things like that and uh, just uh, a couple of other um, guest spots that I've done since then uh, um, I've also done like a, this one that hasn't come out yet called Sound Dodger, which is like a it's like a rhythm action kind of game that this guy called One Mr Bean has, has made, um, who made a re- really series of really cool um, sort of flash games that came out I, I don't know a couple of years ago um, was the last one I think, uh, um, and he's he's really really amazing with flash like he knows it inside out, um, but he's he's normally doing quite sort of art art games I suppose, but um, mm. But this one's like purely just about the joy of music, and it's um, the idea is you've got a circle where I think I'm allowed to say this. Uh, I think he's revealed it at GDC, but uh, yeah, it's a, you know it's a game where um, basically all the uh, the enemy attack waves move towards you, and you have to avoid them, and uh, it's all in time set like really, really sort of to, to the music very closely, you know. Um, so the levels are like designed around the, the tracks that've been made for it. Um, so that's one one little thing. So there's a circle um, and and a circle, are... and you've got like yeah, like almost like a bullet hell thing where you've got um, uh, loads of uh, triangles coming in at you. And if you imagine like if you've got dubstep, track, I mean this is the, the example that I like. It's always like if you've got the wubs, then like the, the enemies will actually wub, you know, like <laughs> and then like come towards you. Like it's it's really interesting the way he's done it. I mean, I, I don't make dubstep; it's not it's not my style. But uh, there are, are a couple you of dubstep skirting tracks around the circle to dodge them as they come. Yeah, at you. they're all coming towards you in like really amazing wave for uh, waves, and it's very sort of abstract visuals. Um, but it's just really nicely like set to the music. Um, it's a, it's like designed around the music, you know. I, I guess awesome. like, something like that. Yeah. And what kind of music did you write for that? Um, one is actually a drum and bass tune because like that's my that's my background, you know. Like like when I was a DJ, I was drum and bass DJ like for ten years or something. Uh, that I mean that was I still make the old drum and bass track and um, like like some some slow I mean I'm I'm getting more into different tempos these days but really my 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 background is in drum and bass so it's like the first time I've actually put drum and bass in a game as far as I know um, apart from maybe in rockabilly head but yeah and then uh, so like and then the other one is like a more um, it's actually a track that I've done with this group called North Bass which is actually coming out on record anyway um, but it's also licensed to to that game so it's called uh, it's called overdose and it's by this uh, me and this guy that I, I wrote most of my drum and bass tunes with um, so it's like yeah you can actually go and hear it on um, um, if you look for north bass on soundcloud um, you can hear overdose because it's coming out on um, god I should know the record label's name um, <laughs> unfortunately I don't uh, have wait, you been on a record uh, label before is that a first I for you? I think it's in City Records actually um, I'm not sure because um, I don't really know much more much about like uh, 
this tempo's like record labels, whereas I know all the drum and bass labels. I don't know the um, like my my mate who I wrote it with, Silver. Who I you know I go go back as far as like maybe ninety seven, ninety six, making tunes with him. Um, like he's 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 actually you know done the business side and like sold it. Um, whereas you know we just wrote it together in Manchester. Right. Was, and this um, is your first uh, record label debut. Oh no no no! I've got my own label, Jonathan. Yeah, I've been doing this for years. Like I've I've had hundreds of records out. Like um, yeah yeah. I have like, no idea. Yeah yeah. There's like there's one right there. Like so, uh, Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, so. Uh, huh. Yeah, I mean uh, Hospital Records. This is like a, a quite well known drum and bass label. It's um. Yeah, I've, I've done most drum and bass labels like over the years, and uh, I guess mostly in yeah drum and bass, so, like the well known ones, I suppose. Like you know, um, it's not a big scene, but out of the uh, what is there, I suppose I've covered most of, of the labels. Yeah, okay. even though I was, wasn't like one of the biggest artists or anything. Yeah, sure, but you you stuck with it, and you, you I assume you built a fan base around there. Did yeah, you know, I made a living out of it. it. Was you know, it was my career, and I, I saw the world. You know, I, I toured. Um, pretty much every corner of the, the world, like you know, Australia to Japan, you know, New Zealand, Aus uh, America, all over, you know, like South America. So, yeah, I, I've um, pretty much been to all four corners just from from my DJing. And I mean, even though I didn't make much money from it, you know, uh, all, overall, I, I, I made a living, and um, most of the money went back into equipment and stuff. Um, sure. And, uh, and do, and like, do you think we, any of your bands from yeah. that carried over into That's the games? Yeah. Uh, that... No, it's so separate, you know, like at a certain point in my life I just switched and um, even though I made games when I was young, I took a total 10, 11 year break, 12 year break even, uh, and um, just, it, it was um, it was after my, my dad passed away, I basically, because I had... Um, you know, I had um, my savings, like, basically were there, um, but by the time he, he'd been through cancer and everything, like, they were gone, and I, I had to, would have had to start from scratch kind of thing, and um, so, you know, this is five years ago, I suppose, um, and um, at the time I was, like, starting to make indie games, like, just freeware stuff, just, like, experimenting, and, um, and I just decided, instead of to, to go back into the music, um, you know, full full swing. That I would. Uh, one one of the things is like after after like you know when you're going through grief, the the um, it's very painful. Well, it, for me, it was really painful to to write music actually. Mm. Like, so you know, emotional <laughs> or whatever. Uh, but uh, um, and I think I needed to do something really different. So I just got a job, and um, that was when I, you know, I think I told you last time maybe uh, I worked in Frontier, um, working on connectables and things. Uh, do, do you remember I told you about oh, that? Absolutely, I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was when I got that job, you know, and it was like um, just complete change um, because. Yeah, I haven't been a touring DJ and producer, like and record boss, label boss sort of thing. Uh, it was um, just something totally different, you know. Uh, and I, I needed to do that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and now you are on the cusp of putting games out on consoles. Yeah. Making, uh, still making games uh, strictly for PC, though, on your own. It's a pretty yeah. amazing spot you're in right now. How has it been since the last time you were on the show? How would you say things uh, have changed for you? Well, I must say, like, I mean, when you when you have a big success, I suppose, like, you you expect it to be real smooth ride, you know. Um, but like, and it was a big success, I suppose. And um, I don't know, it, it's not. It's been a bit rough, actually. Like, the, well, the first, yeah, I've had my ups and downs this year. Like, um, I don't know why. It's, uh, but I mean, a lot of people talk talk about this kind of depression you get when you like make a massive project and you get it out there uh, I don't know if I went through that um, probably yeah uh, I was definitely uh, you know very burnt out at the end of it I think and it took its toll on me like mm -hmm. physically and, and a bit mentally as well I think mm -hmm. um, but I, I, yeah overall like, I think you know a year and a bit later I, I do feel a lot happier and, mm. and 
I, you know, I think it's yeah, it's been an amazing thing. I, I, of course, I'm I've been thankful every minute for it. You know, but at the same time, you can't help when you're you're sort of feeling depressed. It's not. It's weird. You can't. You can't control it really. It just you know it just hits you, and um, maybe it was just like exhaustion and stuff like that. But yeah, I, I went through that for a while, and, and I had some like, ups and downs. Um, probably like also dealing with them, um, um, smoking a lot of weed because I, I I actually started to smoke more than I because I've always smoked weed, but I, I started to smoke a lot more during the making of Lone Survivor, and huh. um, and I, I think that was like getting too much and uh, I think I think maybe that was actually quite a bad thing so I've publicly I've, I've sort of always kept this quiet really it was weird but you know it, it was amongst my fans and things but like I, I don't know I might as well just say it you know and uh, I'm not ashamed like that I smoke weed it's uh, something I've always done for 20 years or whatever but I, I just think I was doing too much and I'm really at the moment I've given up smoking tobacco you know, and stuff like that and it's it's really helping me like cut down and I'm just trying to live a bit healthier at the moment and you know uh, so so that my uh, so if my body's like a bit healthier then hopefully the mind will be as well <laughs> oh, yeah that makes a lot of sense that's difficult though it takes a lot of mental exertion to kind of let go of yeah. the things that have given you comfort it's, or solace yeah, it's in the so weird like I, I should have been so much happier than I have been in the last year but you know I'm, I'm oh. happy now like I'm pretty happy at the moment so <laughs> you seem happy but I've heard from a lot of different people who've been on this show and just in general, that after you put all of your focus and all your energy and kind of your structure and purpose mm. into creating a game, and then you put the game out there and it's like, now what? And expectations are, of course, high about how happy you're going to be when it's done, yeah. but you kind of lose the relationship you had with the creative process. And and uh, a lot of uh, Alexander Bruce has talked about this. Jonathan Blow, uh, uh, Tom yeah. Martinez, they they it's like a, a sense of loss that they have uh, when the game is out and done, and it's it's kind of like saying goodbye to a, a kid and letting him mm. go off to college, and you kind of hope for the best for him, but you're no <laughs> longer there to kind of yeah um, uh, guide them along. Mm. For me, it's hard to know whether it was that. I, I don't know if it was anything to do with the project. To be honest, I never wanted to see the project again. Like at, at the end of it, I, you know, I'm amazed that I have actually spent the last. We will probably get to this, but like, I have spent the last six months working on it again. Um, I've been working on Land Survivor for like, yeah, pretty much six months now. And, uh, um, since yeah, since Christmas or just before Christmas. Uh, and yeah, I mean that's like. I have no idea why I'm doing that. <laughs> but, um, well, I'd love to hear about uh, people are. Yeah, I guess, I, guess like, I do care about it. You know, I, I do want it to be as good as it can be. Um, mm -hmm. And with a game, like there is always, I think games often benefit from additional polish, like more than movies, maybe. Um, mm -hmm. You know, because you're always fixing problems and bugs and. Um, it just feels, you know, even if like you don't encounter any of these bugs, like they're rare or something, like right? they're actually, um, it just it can like adds to a feeling of being really solid, you know. So hopefully, like the PlayStation version that comes out is going to feel like that really, you know, like an old school um, when you bought a cartridge, you know, and the game didn't crash. It didn't, like generally, and like, unless the cartridge was like, you know, like full of dust and like your Nintendo glitched or something, sure. like. You know, basically, the game was designed to not need a patch, and like, mm -hmm. you know, and for the most part, like, well, the good, the better games at least were pretty bug-free, like in inverted commas, you know. Sure. So I'm, I'm really hoping that I'm going to release like the, you know, the super solid like like Nintendo SNES version, like you know, that's like like absolutely as polished as it can be, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you know, in terms of that, just like and feel and bugs and and look and you know and everything yeah, so, yeah. That's um, but, yeah I've been back on it <laughs> how I is mean, the process it, been? sorry how it's, was the process to uh, get it on that's, the console that's contributed to a lot of the stress I think just when I was mm -hmm. getting out of it I, I agreed to do this and like I mean I wanted to do this but um, I kind of I uh, wasn't really in the right headspace to go back into Lone Survivor and it's taken a lot of mental energy to just even some of the the energy to go back into it. each each session is like you know it takes a lot of work to 
to just uh, get get me in the mindset and everything. Uh, so that's, Are you getting help hard. with the, the coding? Is it hard to code over from PC? Um, to... well, one of the things is like, I mean, yeah, I'm not coding it on the PlayStation at all, but the, the game runs mostly in my, my own language, which is like, um, it's, it's sort of, um, it's so, it's like it's like a script language, a bit like the the, the tool that you'd use to, the uh, the monkey the Lucas Arts guys would have used to make Monkey Islands, like Scum, yeah. if you've heard of it. So it's probably like that. It's like a scripting engine, you know, that's um, like a homemade sort of thing. So the idea is that the Curve guys have to um, port that part of it. So they have to port the engine, but then all of the gameplay code is still my own, like because it's all in the scripts. Um, in my own language that I've devised uh, to to run the game, so um, so that's one of the problems. Like my has to, my scripts have to be like you know bug free um, mm. before you know even if their engine is perfect. Like my my scripts have to be there's you know the whole game is full of a million different scripts. You know, mm. so it's, uh, it's almost no two bits of logic share any gameplay code. You know. Sure. In, in, in Lone Survivor, because every situation is almost unique in the game. So there's just a million scripts in the game, you know. And like they, they have to, yeah. They so they have to all be right, you know. So like, I mean, it's been adding adding lots of extra content to the the PS3 version or the Vita version, like uh, means that I've got to debug the whole thing again, you know, like make it all work with the old stuff, you know, um, test it and, and it breaks things in all kinds of new ways and funky ways that you never expect. And so there's like just months of that, you know, tweaking and um, and also just like when you get a chance to get make the visuals look better and things like that, you're like, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go, you know, like just tweaking and tweaking and tweaking, just like adding the flashlight effects and, and stuff and I hopefully like people play it and it really is like a whole you know, fresh new version of the game. It's like it feels nicer and it looks nicer, and it's sort of, yeah, it will play nicer on the Vita as well because the scrolling will be smoother and things, and it's got achievements and what have you. And like, yeah, I just I'm really excited about it actually, um, even though it's been very painful <laughs> to play. <make. laughs> yeah, it sounds like it's um, the chance you have to refine it in a way that. Might not have had the motivation to before, but you have to. Well, it wasn't motivation. It was just pure. I mean, I'll be honest. It's purely financial. I had to mm. get the game out, you know, or I couldn't feed my my daughter. Like it was, you know, it was one or the other. So sure. Um, you you mean uh, with the initial go back, you know, go back to to Frontier or somewhere like that? Um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So which I didn't want to do. Um, yeah. I didn't want to go back and work on Connect Tools <laughs> like anymore. So now <laughs> you have the allowance to. Um, to go back and fix it and have a yeah, I mean it is it's a sort of um, so where Ridley Scott made his director's cut um, because the studio made him do it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but the the cut that he didn't want. Um, the problem with with me was budget, and so I'd run out of budget basically, and um, I, I so I, I managed to. The thing is, like, I mean. The way I've designed it, I can give this away about it because I haven't really said anything about it yet, um, like publicly. Uh, but you know, the way I've designed it is well. I mean, I've said I've said this much, which is that you know um, everything is in New Game Plus. So, and that's not the other game that I'm working on, New Game Plus. That's like when you play Learn Survivor the second time, um, there's a whole new extra story and end, two two new endings. And um, so it's like it. It's trying to give you give fans that have already played it before like a really interesting thing to to go back to the game for kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you know how um, you know how the Silent Hills have got like some deeper stuff to go back into the game for. Uh, so it's basically coming at coming you know going from coming from that angle, and uh, I think people really love that stuff in Silent Hill. You know, it's like. Um, it makes the, it feel uh, the dog like ending, that. like the UFO endings, and like the weird weapons, and this. this is not quite as silly as that, but like there's a, there's a couple of silly things in there, which I'm I'm quite looking forward to people discovering. You know, there's, I'm not going to tell anyone at all what's in it. I'm just going to wait and see what if people find it. Like people will go, hold on, this is this basically the same game. What's going on? And then they'll just figure something out, and I'm sure it won't take long, but you know. They'll suddenly like the wiki will be full. I'm hoping, like you know, and uh, but there's there's things that it's very deep in there that maybe people won't find for 
quite a few few days at least. <laughs> um, so it'll be very fun when it, when it releases, just seeing seeing what people do and uh, if they discover it all. You know. Is there any uh, chance that that version will come to PC as well? Because it sounds like you've had to remake yeah. it PC just to get it over there. Yeah, um, definitely. It will come to PC. I can say that now. I haven't. I don't think I've said that officially. I, I have to be so careful of what I say because, you know, people do get upset on Twitter and you know things like you you say one thing or you promise something and, you know, people then expect it and if you don't mm -hmm. deliver it, like. So I um, wasn't sure that there's various technical reasons why I, I couldn't necessarily just bring it to the PC, um, like which I won't go into. It's a bit boring, really, but um, just uh, it's whether or not I can get those things solved. Um, so it's not an easy case of just going click build. You know, um, uh, it's not really like that. I, I don't want people to think that it is like that. There's a lot of stuff that's gone in there. It's like specific to the PS3 Vita as well. So you know, it's separating that stuff out and. Um, you know, it's not a simple job, even though I've been working on the PC myself or on the Mac, rather, but, um, yeah, like, it's not that straightforward, you know. Sure, uh, yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. Uh, so that's really exciting. Thank you for announcing that thing on our Yeah, thing. well, that's, yeah. Yeah, it's great, man. It should be, like, July or June or something. Uh, no, um, actually, no, I don't have a date, sorry. No, it's going to be late summer. Late summer. Right. Well, that's still pretty soon. I don't have okay. a date. Yeah. No, it's soon, man. Yeah. I mean, it's um, we're you know we're at um, we're past alpha now, so it's like it's running, and you know I've seen it, I've played it, um, uh, and it's just getting the you know the uh, the differences like the between the two platforms to kind of be as minimal as possible, you know, from now on, and like gradually one by one fixing the bugs and uh, porting the the new content that I've added. Because um, he's basically ported the original version now. Now it's like, like you know, Curve have to catch up with all the stuff that I've done since. Like, right. Um, so they ported. They were working on the port while you were making the. Yeah, I mean, I'm there. trying to keep it as much as possible in the um, in the scripts, but not uh, you know. So so really, they don't actually have to do that much. But mm -hmm. there will be a few places where like the code has been changed just to make the engine like do some of the new stuff that I need to do and things. Um, but it's, yeah, it's not a, a huge job for them. It's, it's not too bad. And are you going to E3 as well? Um, yeah, I'm going to E3, yeah. Um, we, we are, I th I, yeah, we're displaying it. Uh, I, I suppose I can say that as well. Like, um, uh, uh, I think that's official, yeah. Um, I'm obviously there for a reason, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is that uh, Sony helping you with that, or are you? Gonna yeah, um, that's yeah. I think we're actually. I'm not sure um, the specifics, but you know, obviously, like with Curve, sort of taking some of the publishing duties, I, I don't have to worry about all of these things specifically. I just know that I'm there and I need to display it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I think, yeah, I think it might be on Sony's booth. Or something like on the Vita, um, but I'm trying. I'm pushing really hard to get a, a cabinet, like where you step inside with like um, blue curtains. Like that would just be so awesome. Like, like you know, it'd be really dark. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, maybe maybe try and get some loud speakers in there as well. And, uh, yeah. I'll bring the curtains if you want me to. I'll, I'll <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't know. Yeah, I need to ask her because um, I definitely want it to. If 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 at all possible, it's it's so much better in the dark. You know, like mm. where. It's, um, Absolutely. And have you played it on the Vita yourself yet? Yeah, it's um, you know, it's still got a way to go to like like all the all the um the effects, the visual effects are going to be ported last, so it doesn't look you know like the 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 other version yet. But it's it will sort of happen very quickly, I think. Now, all the the gameplay is running, so it's just a case of like getting the visuals to look the same and stuff, and doing all the the trickery um, that I've you know. Uh, done in shaders and things, um, mm -hmm. like all that stuff. Uh, How does it feel on the uh, the handheld as opposed to on uh, the TV? Or uh, yeah, well, I'm still playing with the controls at the moment, um, but I my gut feeling is that I'm I want to have um like maybe um, more of a a classic control scheme. Um, mm. I, yeah, I, again, like, I probably shouldn't say what I'm going for until I finish, just in case. But um, 
Um, you know, uh, one of the one thing I would say is like I did choose on the, the, the keyboard to use a toggle um, for getting your gun out, which is like um, maybe that's what you choose on a keyboard, but maybe not on a um, on a pad, if you see what mm. I mean. Um, just because, like, you know, holding down two keys together on a keyboard doesn't work very well sometimes. Mm. And, uh, so it might it might be that. Well, I suppose it, it doesn't hurt to say it might be like that. You know, you have a, um, a like a trigger to to like get get the gun out, and you hold the trigger sort of thing. Like, and it feels more like you're, you know, like in a classic sort of. I think most Silent Hills and Resident Evils use that that format, right? It's, sure. You know, trigger and then a button to to actually shoot. Uh, but if you let go of the trigger, like his his hand goes away, rather than ah. like ha tapping the button up, tapping down, sort of thing. And that's the only small change, I think. But um, yeah, it feels it feels really nice. The Vita's D pad is just oh, it's great. Like it's so much better. <laughs> than using, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that sounds. Uh, and in terms of screen size, do you think that it makes a, a big difference whether you're playing on the little screen, the medium screen on the PC, or like a big screen? Uh, um, to... I'd say Vita's just about the minimum size. You know, uh, maybe like 3DS, but preferably an XL. Like, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I think though anything smaller than that's not going to work. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I think I said this to you last time, probably. But yeah, I mean, iPad, I would consider definitely at some point still. Um, but I want to. Maybe, uh, well, I'm not sure if I want to do any more ports at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. But, I, wanted, I, asked, yeah. uh, I asked Tommy Refinis if he'd ever bring Super Meat Boy to any other consoles, and he said, mm -hmm. as long as I never have to write, as long as I don't even have to open the file ever again. I don't yeah. even want to see the file name, let alone. Because he, I don't, you want, yeah, I don't even want to set up the build one more time. Yes, yeah, so, I know. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah, uh, you are working on New Game Plus, which yeah. Which, uh, speaking of Twitter and how you get people's hopes up, I <laughs> totally got my hopes up on Twitter when you first announced yeah. it, and then my, my soul was crushed when it was gone, and then it, it got uh, reborn in your mind, at least. Yeah. In that way. So how did that process go? You started it, then you uh, were going to stop, I mm. presume, for Lone Survivor console, and then you've restarted it since. Yeah, I mean, that was... Um... That's exactly what I'm talking about when I say like getting people's hopes up, and uh, mm. I mean that's a big example of that. <laughs> it was, I, I, it was um, a real mistake to say I, I canned it basically because, in a moment of like ah fuck this, you know, like I just was like ah, ah throwing it out the window, like, and I do that a lot with my games, you know. I've I've done every like Lone Survivors went went on the trash heap about seven times, you know, like, probably, uh, and, and uh, yeah, I just, I do that a lot when I'm having a real, like, bad time with it, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm overstressed, you know, and uh, so what I should do in those instances is probably, like, just wait, <laughs> you know, and, like, and realise that I do that, and actually, like, if I, if I hold on a little bit longer, I'll probably come back to it and figure out a way of pushing on with it, you know, and actually actually fixing it. Sure. Um, well, I'd imagine that the the fact that Twitter, you're not just talking to a few friends. I mean, you interact with a few friends on Twitter. Well, yeah, that's the silly thing. You sometimes think you forget, like, there are 5,000 people listening or whatever. It's like... <laughs> and then um, beyond that, uh, we picked up the story, I, at least I think we did, in my mind. Yeah, no, that's it. And, and, and Twitter is used as a, a news source. Like, and that's what really scares me now. It's like... But as soon as people are actually watching um, in, in some way, like then um, yeah, anything you say on Twitter is fair game, really. Like it's you know it's, it is my blog in a way, like more than my blog. I don't really blog that much, you know, on my mm -hmm. my own site. Just like once every month or two, you know, I should do more. But it's um, Twitter's just the easiest one because yeah. Well, previously, as a smoker, I would always like be tweeting, you know, just while smoking a cigarette or a joint, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's um, that's probably where I, where I do it, uh, you know, where I sort of like find the time to actually do do any kind of promotion. Like, uh, I don't really promote my stuff, you know. It's um, yeah. I was looking yeah. on your YouTube uh, page. I think the last video uploaded was. The Lone Survivor launch video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for, for more. I can help you put videos together at some point. I got a capture device. Maybe I'll make a, a new game plus capture for you. That'll be fun. 
Um, well, yeah, I've got to do a new launch trailer, I guess, for the um, for the PS3 Vita, um, because I'm going to have to do. Well, the problem is like it looks different now, so mm. I'm going to have to. Like the uh, the guy's got a flashlight like mask thing, and it looks much nicer. And I think it'll be a shame. To, so I'm going to have to do a new new trailer of some kind. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, yeah, mm. God, that's exhausting. I I find them so tiring. Like Premiere crashes. Oh, it's a really old version, but it barely works. And then I have to get my Windows side of my Mac working, which hardly works. And like, it's just a real nightmare to actually to, to get anything recorded. Um, well, if I get code for it early, I've got a capture box. Yeah, editing suite. I could make you a thing. Sure. Hmm. Well, think about it. You well, to... yeah, that's very kind of them. But that, yeah, I mean, actually, the the, um, the guys at Curve are, are capturing footage as well, or not? Like they get the, it's actually a real, there's a real like art to capturing footage as well. Like and not just playing it, playing it at the right pace, and you know what I mean, like all that sort of thing. I find that's why I find it takes so long. And someone like um, Jonathan Cactus is so good at this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like his, his, like he always shows the exact right clips, you know, and. Uh, I don't know. It makes it look effortless, but actually, like to do to do a good one, like even the, the launch trailer is, you know, the launch last, last video I've done. But yeah, I did actually put it, like th th two weeks into it or something, even oh, like wow. just editing it, you know, and um, just uh, I mean, I, not partly because it was crashing all the time and like my software was rubbish, and I was trying to find an actual uh, capture program that worked and stuff. But yeah. <laughs> Sure, it's a lot you had to do. You had the, the music, the graphics, the writing, the promotion. Um, yeah, yeah, exhausting. I, I hope that as time goes on, you get to back off from some of the more tedious aspects. Of yeah, there is a lot of tedious crap. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot. You know, there's better ways to use my time, you know, mm -hmm. probably. Um, but yeah, I might publish New Game Plus with somebody. I have been looking for somebody, but obviously I can't say who, but because I might not do it. But um, it's someone really cool, and um, I just yeah, I, I am very tempted. Maybe maybe it's a case of like um, maybe I can self-publish on the PC, but even so, I, I can definitely do it. I mean, I've been through it, but it's whether or not I want to again, mm, I don't know. No kidding. Um, but then am I indie? Who knows? <laughs> I think I so. Care about that, really. <laughs> I mean, as long what, as if I'm people aren't giving you loads myself. of money, <laughs> I'm sorry. Say that again. I'm still making it all on my own. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, yeah. You are still indie until you take the money up front and then do everything they tell you to do. Uh, right, that's the way I see it. I mean, it's it's all about whether or not you've got creative control. You know, mm -hmm. as long as you have 100 percent creative control, then you're independent, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't buy the definition that it's, like, not published, because I used to, that's how I used to consider it, the word, if I, if we must do a definition of it, like, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, I, I actually think of it more as, like, yeah, just, I mean, independent as in, you know, with no outside influence on the, the design or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And uh, so you dropped New Game Plus and then you decided to pick it back up again. What motivated you to pick it up the second time? Um, so it's actually a really silly thing, like, because all the characters in it um, were supposed to be, uh, like, like uh, they, you could use both hands. Um, so you could, like, carry a sword. Like in Dark Souls, you can uh, have a left-handed sword or, you, you know, you could have a, um, two katanas, you know, if you wanted. Um, but it's... The problem was I'd have to do the animation like flips and um, one trick like that the people often use is to flip the the left and right sprites. Um, you know, is such a big saving. Like you don't have to draw the sword in the left hand, like or the, or the right hands. You know, um, it's always in the right. It's in the right hand on one side, it's on the left hand on the other side. But it doesn't matter. You know, um, but like when you when you want to actually put swords in individual hands, you've suddenly got to draw left and right, and then you've got to, um, you know, you've got to draw every animation with both hands, like, so it's like, I'd have to draw, you know, I mean, there's like combos in this game, so you do little, um, you know, forward slash, back slash, like, stab, lunge, overheads, and all this kind of thing, and like, every, every hand, you know, uh, sorry, uh, sorry, every, um, 
facing direction, up, down, left, right, would need all of these frames in both hands. So it was actually like hundreds of frames of animation. Like, mm. um, and, you know, it's, it's sort of... Um, I had to do it in a much more simple way. So I basically said that um, you've got, you know, your melee weapons in the right hand, and then you've got very simple things in the left hand, like uh, a bow, uh, a, a staff, um, things that I like, could support that kind of item. So it's just changing it to like, okay, I really wanted because I am left-handed, and my whole thing was like, like I wanted, you know, to have my sword in the left and like be completely ambidextrous. If I, yeah, in fact, Dark Souls is not entirely on Demon Souls is not entirely like that anyway um, it's sort of more biased towards the right hand and you have a simple move set on the left hand because obviously like they haven't done all the animations with the left hand as well they've obviously you know had at some point said yeah it's got to be like simpler in the left hand mm -hmm. and um, so you know if it's a shield will have a diff slightly different set of moves um, in the left hand than the right hand so really you can only use a shield in the left hand mm -hmm. um, so uh, it's more going like back to that restriction that they used in Demon Souls because even though I tried to get away from it, like say, oh no, my game's going to be like you can do whatever you like and you can like be dual wielding like massive pole axes or whatever, um, uh, then it wasn't going to happen uh, without a huge amount of animation and time. And it just when I actually tried it out, it didn't really. It, you know, it, it sort of actually looked confusing. Um, I tried with two massive clubs and a barbarian, you know, and he's like going, for chub, for chub. and it just, it actually, because of the size of the sprites and stuff, it looked a bit um, hard to read anyway. Mm. Um, so when I put it on hiatus, that was the problem. And then when I, when I sort of made that decision, coming back to it, it was like, okay, I'm going to hack out all of the stuff that I've got for the left hand and just go back to a really simple, like, um, shield type move or like a cast type move and like it's all like you know real simple basic animation with it almost like in, in Lone Survivor the main character's got like a push animation that's like almost used everywhere you know it's like pick something up open the door you know in Monkey Island it's the same thing you know um so he's he's more got you know your character's more got like um a push animation with the left hand, which can be a shield, it can be used in like a bow stance, um, you know, and it's all sort of like using the same sprites and creative ways to um, sort of save time, you know. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think basically I got it down to a manageable amount of um, frames of animation. It's still like, you know, it's still getting close to like Street Fighter by the time you've done all the moves. I mean, it's not, it's not quite that ridiculous, but, and luckily the, the, the sprites are quite small, but um, yeah, because you've got facing up and facing down, um, it is, it's quite a lot, even though the move set is probably slightly simpler than, than a Street Fighter character, but mm. yeah, it's, um, it's a hell of a lot of uh, animation. So yeah, that's the problem. And um, I think I've got it down to a manageable size now. It's like I can actually, I can actually do it. I've made four characters, um, and you know, like a, a mage, a, a barbarian, and uh, you know, a, a ranger. ranger. And uh, did you actually get a chance to play? So I, I did. You did. Ah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. How did you find it? <laughs> I, I was uh, relieved my computer could run it because it's got like um, a polygon or two, and the mm, computer mm. usually poops on polygons right yeah. away. But um, what a fantastic game you're putting together! Uh, I'm really excited for other people to get to play it. It, it, uh, it made me feel reminiscent of the days when role-playing games were truly uh, 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 kind of reimagining of Dungeons and Dragons. And in Dungeons and Dragons, yeah. you're put in there and you might run into something that'll kill you right off the bat, and that's still fun. And then you you start over again with the dungeon master, and they uh, walk you through it, and mm. you know not to make those same mistakes. So it, it you were not afraid to to kill me. I initially right. go in the <laughs> cave where in Zelda One you go in the cave and you get a sword. In your game, you go in the cave and a red jerk just kicks your ass immediately. <laughs> and you can get a sword. You, and like, one, you can die within five seconds uh, if you're uh, not careful. Like, it's pretty hard, that game. Yeah, I mean, you maybe chose a bad example, I think, because Zelda's pretty brutal, man. Oh, true. It is. Yeah, like, maybe if you Zelda's don't go in the cave first. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
but yeah, no, I love that. Um, I played I played uh, Kingsfield Four recently, like, and it was um, it's the precursor to Demon's Souls, and the game's quite different in in mechanics, but um, and well, in some ways, um, in sorry, in perspective anyway. Um, but uh, like literally, like there's this swamp about one meter from the, the game, the, the spawn point at right at the beginning of the game, and you can actually die by by holding like the wrong direction when the game starts, like literally like within, <laughs> you know, like a fraction of a second. I love that though, it's awesome. You literally, you're, hold, you're not paying attention when the game starts, you're holding the wrong direction, your guy walks into a swamp and just dies, like like, like within a fraction of a second. Like, uh, there's a bonfire in um, Deep Dark Souls, like way in the Tomb of Giants, like this like that as well, and it's ri literally right on a ledge, you know, it's like, <laughs> If you're just holding a direction when you respawn, you just you're dead again. <laughs> you lost all your souls. Yeah, well, I, yeah, it's it's a game where you're gonna have to. It's gonna be you know you know what's coming, and you just kind of have to learn like each bit individually. You know, like an old arcade game sort of thing. Uh, and yeah, so I, I'm glad that you felt, sort of felt the um, old school Dungeons and Dragons because that's I wanted to get that really I like I don't know sort of almost like archetypal. You know, like uh, Gauntlet four guys, like, um, and hopefully like, there'll be quite a lot more than four. But yeah, just get each character to feel like one of those like real classic like Ranger guy. You know, like and he's just like got the, the kind of classic green and the, the classic setup. You know. Um, oh sure. So, uh, because it's, it's yeah, the game's partly about sort of nostalgia and uh, and just like. Um, <laughs> Trying to find well, maybe I shouldn't say, but like the yeah, one theme, I suppose, is is about aesthetics, I suppose, and like um, mm -hmm. trying to like find the ultimate thing within an aesthetic, and uh, and oh. so like it's trying to be, yeah, I mean, it is trying to like draw on that that nostalgic like Zelda um, or Dungeons and Dragons type, very iconic like look, I suppose. Yeah. Sure. Well, one of the things uh, that defines your style, to me, anyway is uh, how specifically you look back on uh, games of the past or things that meant something to you in the past while simultaneously looking forward. Like when you, when you remade Silent Hill, you looked back on Silent Hill, but the things you looked at in Silent Hill aren't the things that people necessarily immediately think of in Silent Hill. And simultaneously, it seemed like you were looking forward and, and doing your own things with it. Mm. Uh, Lone Survivor is retro, but at the same time, each individual... Sprite is like a hand painted uh, mosaic. Uh, it's part of the larger mosaic that in itself has dimension, yeah. which is looking forward um, while still kind of paying tribute to how games. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think I probably said, like, I'm probably repeating what I, I said to you last time, but um, I think, yeah, I mean, I'm really not interested in just making a, a retro game. It's not, mm. it's not at all interesting to me. Um, like, Maybe I'm using some of these tropes as like as ways to tell a story or, or something, but I'm, I'm much more. I mean, New Game Plus looks like a. It looks like a. It's, it's supposed to deceive you, you know. It's not. It's, it's supposed to be like on the surface a very simple, like bubbly, happy kind of Zelda-y game, but it's not at all. And it's the oh. theme or, or the uh, how brutal it is, like all of that. Um, both and the, the the theme itself is not what anyone expects, I should mm. think. Um, and again, I've got to be I've got to be so secretive with this one. It's, it's like nobody knows what it's about. You know, it's um and obviously like the theme's the most important to, thing to me in in games. So yeah. um I'm I'm using like old school things, but I'm also using like very modern tricks as well. Like in well, in in the visuals and like the the sound, I suppose. Like just trying to make it, you know, the sound is um, sort of like the you know um, the sound budget on the <laughs> new game plus is the most expensive thing like in the game so far. You know, because I've I've invested in like synthesizers and like just to get this sort of particular look and feel that I want um, uh, to the to the sound you know and uh, it's, it's actually like because yeah uh, it's all to do with the, the character and the story um, but I, I to not give too much away but uh, I, you know I wanted I wanted like it to sound really authentic and like um, so I've bought some eight, actual 80s gear you know to like make the um, the, the soundtrack and and Again, like, I, I don't want to say too much about it without 
giving away things away, but like it's you know it's weird. It's one thing I'm doing is having a very um, electronic soundtrack against uh, um, the um, the very like it's not what you expect. You know, it's like um, the contrast of of that um, is interesting to me and uh, a very clean, lush visual against like um, sort of very dirty, old sounding, but also kind of very uh, lushly produced. Um, mm -hmm. sort of, uh, um, it's a bit like the, movie, the the inspirations actually. If you've seen this, idea, you maybe if you haven't, but there's this movie called The Keep. It's really bizarre uh, movie by Michael Mann, um, and it's uh, it's just got his you know weird like eighties lighting and lots of fog and his his particular style. And um, I think it's Michael Mann. Um, uh, I'd, I'd have to check, but um, anyway, and it's uh, it's very it's, it's a sort of eighties, early eighties movie. It's, uh, the soundtrack is by Tangerine Dream, and um, it's it's just it's odd because you've got this like German castle um, with this like gothic horror thing going on, and um, and then at the same time you've got this like really warm eighties strings and like electro electro very electronic sound. Um, to them, to them, and so when you like see the monster, it's almost like a bizarre kind of alien choir, and it's um, it's just really, it's really odd contrast, you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, like with Lone Survivor, all the, the visual tricks, I guess. With with this one, I'm I'm going really in on the music, and um, like there's not actually m music for most of the game, but when you fight each other in multiplayer, or when you meet a boss, there'll be like loads of different tracks specific to that, and um, huh. be a bit like Street Fighter, like you'll probably have a, a track tied to a location because you'll discover new places to battle with your friends. Um, one of the things in the game is like I don't know if you know is if you didn't play a multiplayer, but um, you've got these altars around the world, uh, which you, if you activate, they they switch between co-op and versus mode. So it's like the whole the philosophy of the game is like no menus, no GUI, pretty much. And um, so you know, you, if you're walking along with your friends and you find this new like cave area with like large you know walls around it, it's like a perfect place to have a little about you know so you uh, you just basically flick on the altar of like a banging track will start playing and then you'll be able to actually like just joust each other for a while and then switch it back off and then carry on on your adventure it's like and that place will be added to your you know sort of pool of um uh places that you can start off for a quick multiplayer match in, in a like a you know street fighter location sort of thing um, and each one will have a, a sort of track um assigned to it is the idea like huh yeah. and does that work into the overall theme of the the campaign yeah oh definitely well yeah definitely it's um without yeah without wanting to say too much right you don't say too much <laughs> i wanted to be a, a nice surprise so yeah got, but, uh, yeah people are, are like confused by this when they see it but they it, they like it it sort of feels right when they play it but like they're like hmm what's going on i wasn't expecting like this sort of banging electro track to start playing like when the uh you know, and like it's all like the altar's all sort of um, uh, glowing like a sort of justice cross. You know, it's like um, you know, which is actually again like in fact justice is like if you know who justice are, they're sort of a French electro act, a bit like uh, Daft Punk, but much harder sort of thing. But they um, but they yeah, their whole iconography actually looks to me like some of it's come from that movie, The Keep, which is really interesting. When I when I looked at it, I was like, Fuck, there's um, scenes where you know, like there's there's loads of like um, glowing crosses, which which is their sort of thing that they use in their their videos and their, their kind of uh, iconography. I find that's quite interesting, and it's actually it's something I'm borrowing, like because New Game Plus is a cross, so the plus is the cross. So. Ah, uh huh. In fact, if you go to newgameplus.com right now, that you'd be able to see it. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I've, I've bought newgameplus.com, <laughs> uh, but there's just a cross on there at the moment. Um, so but. you've got elements of kind of Street Fighter feel and think, um, mm. old Zelda, Dark Souls, any yeah. and the stamina meter and the roll mechanic and deciding. Uh, having combat feel like what move are you going to risk using yeah, right yeah. now felt very Monster Hunter-ish to me, but maybe that's because right. I've been playing a lot of Monster yeah. Hunter. Well, people say um, a lot of um, 
Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say that there's there's a lot in common with Dark Souls and, and Monster Hunter. I think mm -hmm. Dark Souls is a sort of... I think it might have been born from Monster Hunter's popularity. Like, if you look at Kingsfield and then you look at Demon Souls, it's like, hmm, Monster Hunter came out on the on the PSP in that in that time, you know, right. and like that was huge in Japan. Um, so you could probably see that, like, you could probably trace its evolution, you know, in the same way as like if you look at I don't know, like uh, Resident Evil One, and you look at Lone in the Dark or something, you know, it's like. Mm -hmm. You can see that sort of progression. Uh, sure. Yeah, I, I imagine that Demon Souls has partly come from their aging, like um, Kingsfield series, not actually having anything but a really niche audience because mm -hmm. the, the the actual gameplay, you know, the com the combat was very basic. You know, it's uh, it's not nearly as elegant as, as Demon Souls, um, and uh, and it's not just the first person perspective. But it's the whole like timing and the the sort of pace of the game is like, but if you look at, you know, I don't know, I mean, there's, I'm just speculating, I've never even mm. thought about this, but I, I definitely think there's, you know, if someone suggested Monster Hunter to me, uh, because I was into Demon Souls, they were like, yeah, just try out Monster Hunter, you know, you might like it, kind of thing. Um, and did you just, like it? Have you played Monster Yeah, I love it, yeah. I am basically just got the Wii version, um, and nobody was really playing it anymore, so it was kind of like on my own, but uh, yeah, I got a certain way, and it's it's got the same problem as, I played a bit of Dragon's Dogma uh, last year as well, and it's got the same problem for me, it's a bit too grindy, like there's a lot of um, extraneous grind in in those games that, that Demon's Souls seem to strip away, um, mm -hmm. and uh, Dark Souls is even neater in that respect, I think, actually. Um, yeah, it's one thing I really want to avoid with my game. It's no grind, no menus, no endless inventory. Um, like, uh, so, so it's even simpler than, than Demon Souls. Like, you, you don't carry, uh, um, you know, you, you carry what you've got in your hands, and that's it, sort of thing. And um, and that defines what your character is. But you can throw stuff away. You know, you can sort of throw your sword away and carry nothing. Like, just be, uh, you know. Punching, if you want. Uh, if oh, you're, no. Yeah. So that's the idea. It's 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 more about uh, you are what what you see on your character, kind of thing. Your, your mm -hmm. armor plus your two hands. You know. Um, yeah. In terms of how much I felt that you were asking of me as a player, I felt like you were really um, making this as fun and simple for me as as possible, while still giving me a lot to think about. Uh, when yeah. you kill me. I'm just back in immediately, and I know right where I am, and I know what my problems are, and I didn't really feel all that punished. Um, I felt like I was just kind of yeah, because you didn't know the system or something, like because because there was a menu you didn't realize that you had that you could have healed or something like that. You see, I'm hoping sure. to avoid all of that. Yeah, so it's and I got to plant some berries, and then when I died, they had, had grown, and I was like, oh, berries now. That that almost makes it feel like it's good that I died because you now I'll get to eat berries. Yeah, that's you see that that mechanic. That's the um, that's exactly what I'm going for, right? So, yeah, just to back up that, that. So you plant um, you plant seeds and they grow into to berries. But uh, what it means is that like each um, but only when you die. So so each time you die further out, you you can plant a new berry, like and it will enable you to get a little further because. Mm -hmm. You know, so without having to um, level up or like, you know, or or do anything like that, you can actually add progression, like just within the world, sort of thing. And uh, and then the 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 idea is that um, um, if you've got multiplayer, you've got actually four players, then there's less fruits to to go round. So it kind of balances itself out. You know, it's like um, it, it it actually gets harder just from that one simple mechanic kind of thing, like. Um, because you've got less healing potions, effectively. Um, sure, to go around. So it makes it so even when you're competing, you're kind of, I mean, even when you're cooperating, there's an the air of competition and a little bit of yeah, yeah, exactly. between you and the yeah. players. Yeah. If you're it, fighting, it me, if sorry, you're fighting each other in, in PvP, I was no, sorry to interrupt, man. Um, no, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> 
But if you're fighting each other, yeah, you can, um, if you want, you can destroy the berries or you can leave them there, you know, um, you can just not have them on the table at all if you want, you know, it's up to you. It's like, yeah, I might leave them there in case I get hurt first and I need to, to get them, you know, but then you're, you're risking, like, crossfire if there's, like, three players around you. Um, if you're going to go in and harvest one, you know, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot to, from very simple, hopefully very simple mechanics like this will come complexity like, mm -hmm. without needing menus and uh, things like that. Well, it's a bit like... I've lost you, Jonathan. Well, you've lost me? Oh, no. Have you still lost me? Uh, hi. Uh, oh, no. Hello. Oh, are you back? I think so. I don't know yeah. how I went away. What happened there? I was always here with Ooh. me, but you lost me. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, uh -huh. I was about to say that it sounds like when you make music, you can layer a bunch of simple uh, tracks, but together they have a depth to them when you stack them on top of each other. Mm. It sounds a lot like what you're you're doing with New Game yeah, Plus. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I had never thought about it that way. I mean, I don't think about design too much, except um, I sometimes, like, um, well... You know, you build a little bit of the game, and then a problem shows itself, and then you try and think of a solution to that problem, and then another problem so it so it shows itself. But yeah, I guess you've got to have a f philosophy going into it. You know, you've got to be like, yeah, I want to make. So my philosophy going into this one is well, with Lone Survivor, it was yeah, it was um, uh, no, not showing any statistics, and mm. and again, I'm keeping that one, that same restriction in, in New Game Plus, no t no statistics, even though they're there. Um, but also no GUI and no no backpack, right? So, you know, in four player, it's not going to be interesting if people are all shuffling their inventories. Um, uh, I th you know, I think that's even a problem with Monster Hunter and uh, it's a problem with, like, Demon's Souls and Dark Souls online play. They got around it a bit with, I don't know if you played Four Swords, uh, Zelda Four Swords. No, but... yeah, yeah, I love the look of that. Yeah, I've always wanted to. Yeah. There's also no inventory in that. It's just sword and then whatever your sub weapon is. Then each oh, character will have to collect a different. Yeah, it's it's uh, mm. it's um similar to your game, but not at all. So you don't have to worry yeah. about that too um, much. You'll, I think you'll find more Zelda stuff will be creeping in there. There's going to be a lot of traps and puzzles, and um, ah. I mean the puzzles are going to be simple, quick ones. They're not going to be elaborate Zelda rooms, but um, there will be. A certain amount there. I think more, more of what I'm talking about is traps and avoiding traps and um, things that, like in multiplayer, could be really interesting. Like mm. just simple pressure plate arrow type stuff can be, you know, or maybe a rolling balls or like a crusher, you know, or like a block that comes out the wall and pushes you off the edge. All that stuff, if, if you can actually activate it in four player and you can do it to each other and to the enemies. And that sort of thing, like that, that is going to be really interesting. I think uh, that's where it's and like, obviously you can fall down levels as well. So, um, crumbling pits, um, you know, pits that you can switch on and off to open little. Uh, uh, so one game I love is Dungeon Master. If you have mm. played it, but uh, it's uh, you know it's, it had a really cool uh, puzzle design, but it was based around traps really more than um, like lock and key type stuff. It was more like how to avoid being like horrendously punished, you know, and uh, and I think the same theme is going in in this game. So there's a certain there's a certain amount of that stuff in in the the deep the Souls games, um, but I I would like to take that further and and actually see what I can do with them um, with multiplayer as well. Um, just uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of fun to be had with with um, just. Uh, even simple pressure plate and an arrow, you know, uh, which you can trigger again and again. Um, just using it to kill enemies or using it to kill your friends in, in versus mode, you know, I think it's really fun. It's, so, it's yeah. funny you had mentioned Dungeon Master because my one dream feature for our New Game Plus was that there could be a fifth player who was the Dungeon Master uh -huh. like, uh, with uh, Wii U. A lot of people immediately said this yeah. would be perfect to make a, a Dungeons and Dragons game where there's a fifth mm. player who's kind of creating the the dungeon while the characters are somewhere else or mm. laying out the map, and you could do it with the PS Vita and the PS3 too. Um, I felt like there was a place. Uh, yeah, that's that an interesting idea. 
Yeah, I wonder. Wouldn't be too easy to do. It would be pretty no, hard to be, code, I'd imagine. Yeah, I'm, it's the kind of thing that might work as an expansion because you could have like you could have like a, a simple way of placing bits of world or something in the Dungeon Master like actually is able to lay out sort of chunks of world a bit like um uh, is it Hero Quest is a board game that's like that where, where you basically you, you lay down tiles I think it might be advanced Hero Quest or something but you you, you know you lay down like the little chunks of dungeon they might have a crossroads or something and you, you can sort of choose which direction to go in and it's quite a nice nice way of doing it and actually modular design in, in this game like the world it would, would enable it so yeah, mm. it's kind of yeah there's, there's <laughs> a little bonus mode in there jumping yeah. a bit feature you know, like, when I've done the rest of it like, yeah <laughs> something to think about yeah it would be fun and I just like yeah. thinking about things um, mm. Even um, because I'm finding that culturally, a lot of people I talk to play video games, especially uh, people who are really in it for the design as opposed to the escapism, which is kind of mm. a separate audience. They're getting back into um, old school role playing games. A lot of them are playing yeah. Dungeons and Dragons, not so much because role playing game means to them like story. No, because, because it's uh, creative, right? Yeah, it's creative yeah. and it's it's social and it's about mastering uh, a design and making yeah. it work for you, mm. which uh, fits great. with what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, play is a creative thing anyway, and um, it makes sense that it makes sense that things like uh, Little Big Planet are popular, mm. you know, sure. even though I don't have time for it myself, because when I think of playing something like Little Big Planet, I'm like, that's a, a really elegantly designed thing, but... I would probably be better off actually like getting a code, you know, code package out and actually <laughs> sure. work. You know? Sure, I, uh, I am imagining know, like fifteen-year-old you would have freaked so, out. Yeah, totally. Bit, like, I again, like I, I used to make levels for for games whenever they had an editor, you know, back in the day, and as a kid, yeah, and it, mm -hmm. um, used to make games for repped on uh, levels repped on on the BBC and uh, save them to cassette, you know, like. Did you uh, tell us about that before, Repton? No, 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 no. I mean, not released ones, you know, like just... No, but still, what is a Repton? A Repton is just this game on the BBC, it's like, it's very like Boulder Dash, um, if you know that game, where mm -hmm. it's like eating eating mud and boulders fall down and diamond, collecting diamonds and stuff, and um, and it was like a BBC sort of clone of, of Boulder Dash, I guess. Uh, you've heard of the BBC Micro, yeah? I don't think so. What's the no. BBC Micro? Wow, so yeah, well, the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, made a, a computer in the 80s, um, a sort of rival to the uh, Commodore 64 and Spectrum, but it ended up being much more of an educational computer. That I mean, I didn't have all myself, but they, we, they tended to be in schools, so like, um, I would try and sneak away from sports and, and to do, uh, like, make wrecked on levels and, like... Um, <laughs> things like that. That sounds yeah. awesome. On the BBC. Yeah, I wish I had a yeah. on. Wish I was in the <laughs> It's probably not a... Well, I think it is quite a good game, actually. I I, I, I think it might be better than uh, Boulder Dash, but, yeah, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I won't force you to commit to that uh, yeah. <laughs> here on our, our live stream talk show. The questions mm. have come but, in. Uh, I've totally yeah, ignored them. I've to I feel guilty. I've been... Uh, these questions have been sitting here for minutes upon minutes. Oh, yeah, of course. Mate. And yeah. this has gone by so quickly. I can't believe we only have 25 minutes left already. Wow. Yeah. I am so bad. Uh, Sir Man asks, what's your idea of the perfect horror? That is hard. The perfect anything. Maybe shifting that to just what's your idea of a very good horror thing that just mm. comes to mind right now? Well, it's just so much about taste. Um you know, from my particular taste, I want to see more games that are, like, set in the modern world. Just, um, I would like to see games that are a bit more like, um, well, I suppose, like, Roman Polanski or David Lynch, you know, like, mm -hmm. so, like, Polanski's Repulsion is a game, is a movie about, like, somebody going mad in their, in their apartment, uh, from a sort of agoraphobia, and so uh, she, she's terrified, I think she's, um, She's maybe had a sort of, sort of traumatic event, but she's she's somehow too too terrified to leave the flat. She's house sitting for her cousin, sort of thing. And it's literally just about that. But that's a really interesting premise that for a game, maybe you know um, that. Uh, so something that's actually set in the real world that, that says something about 
um, about the human condition, you know. <laughs> or, I mean, to use that cliche, but like, I, I really, I'm tired of playing games that only exist in a in a game universe. Like, they only say stuff about games. They say stuff about zombie conventions, or you know, or like, it's just that they don't try. You know, they're like, we're going to make the ultimate game where you survive a zombie attack, and that, that is like as far as they're going plot wise. It's not like saying, well, what is what is this? Um, horror actually about you know what do the zombies represent like um, I know you know you can go too far with that but um, but I really try to um, my personal taste is is when people put a lot of time into that sort of in those questions when they're and you can you can kind of tell it in the design and there aren't really many horror games like that I, I can only really think of Silent Hill two Deadly Premonition um, maybe. Dreamweb on the Amiga um, is is a one weird one. It's it's not a great. It's not brilliantly written, but I think the concept behind it is really good. So it's it's actually kind of like a hot uh, Miami with its day in a weird way. It's a top oh. down, very gaudy shooter. Uh, it's not a, well. No, it's an adventure. No, it's, it's it does have shooting, but it's it's like um you're more of a sort of Blade Runnerish character. But um it's it's very much like what is real um, kind of thing, a bit like Lone Survivor, you know, it's, um, it's, it's, uh, you don't, you, you're getting these um, instructions, a bit like Hotline Miami, to, to go and execute people, um, and it's, it, it's coming from your dreams, and it's, and so it's like, that sort of concept is really interesting to, to me, because that's the sort of thing that might happen in the real world, you know, um, right. and, and, like, why would that sort of thing happen, and like, oh. that's, Something you might make a game about, you know, and like, and um, if the writing is is good and, and actually stands up to it, which I'm not sure it would. Going back to play it, it's mm. been a long time since I played it, so I don't know if it's actually a great game. But the concept is the kind of game that I would like to play horror wise. Yeah, sure. It sounds like taking hypotheticals that have some emotional believability mm. that touch on things that we all have a little piece of us uh, in them. Uh, like if you touch on people's fear of sexuality or of of the outside yeah. world or of of losing your mind and, and and kind of getting lost in your own dreams, yeah. we all had that moment where we wake up from a dream and we're like, "Am I totally awake? Am I? Do I have yeah. a grasp on my reality?" Um, no, totally. And um, yeah, I mean, it's a very sliding scale, you know, reality and fantasy. Like it's, mm. it's like so much of what you perceive to be reality may, may be sort of, you know, coloured by your own brain and like, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I find it fascinating. Um, I guess that's my own taste and, you know, I'm not saying like every every game should be like that, but any game wh where it turns out that the horror is purely supernatural, I'm not really interested in. Like if, if it's, you know, genuinely like some, some horrible virus that's like causing people to turn into zombies, I'm not really interested, you know, and if it's like... Um, I mean, unless it's actually trying to say something, unless the virus is an allegory for something else, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You know, it's like actually got to have a meaning um, mm -hmm. and some thought put into it. I mean, George Romero's movies probably work because they're like, you know, he's he's making some political commentary with with his with his zombies there, you know, um, and sure. and so on. Yeah, um, if you are, uh... alien, you know, Alien is like. Um, yeah, a, a game about you know, sorry, a movie about you know various um, like very human fears. I think mm -hmm. um, uh, of uh, yeah of the unknown um, in particular, like you know, and uh, it's kind of a sexy more, unknown, a creepy yeah, deep, yeah, sexy it is. I mean, there's a sex in there, and there's, there's like yeah, the sort of mixture of sex and death, and like that mm -hmm. classic sort of Shakespearean like. But I mean, that's you know, that's the level that a horror game. Or movie movie should be like it's mm -hmm. you know it's not it's not just a sort of like cop out genre to throw blood on the screen and you know it's it's not it's not what it's about yeah if it's only yeah. about trying to simulate a physical threat like oh we're yeah. gonna make you feel like you're gonna get stabbed how long does that yeah. stay interesting for yeah it's it weird really... cause like yeah I mean I, I've, so I've just done an interview about this recently and I I did find it hard to answer this question because I um there's you know on the one hand I love Resident Evil, but it's in the same way that I, um, especially like the re remake or Code Veronica, um, and they're they're really you know classic sort of like almost like 
not gory, but uh, lovely, like haunted house, ghost train type right, experiences that are really beautifully like laid out. You know, mm -hmm. um, very a lot, of, a lot of craft in them, but uh, not not you know, not achieving its effect by by gore or anything like that, but actually mm -hmm. achieve, achieving it by. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think Resident Evil is saying anything. To be, to be honest, like I really don't. Um, in in terms of like the human condition, you know. But at the same time, I like those games. I like the, the actual gameplay a lot, um, and I like the atmosphere in those games. So uh, you think even spending a lot of time in the atmosphere is is is, is in a, in a way that's kind of like a theme. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's the feeling and. Um, Really trying to capture that feeling, and um, obviously they they were trying to ape the the George Romero movies, but they sort of got a feel of their own. Um, I don't know. There's something in there. It's not it's not really what I'm looking for thematically, but um, in a horror. But I yeah, would but play a really, a brilliantly designed Resident Evil again any day of the week. You know, that was like really really neat in its uh, actual survival mechanics. Mm -hmm. So I can play a game just for the the, the mechanics, but. I get so much more out of it if they the mechanics have got like this extra layer of like they they the mechanics match up with meaning you know like in mm -hmm. in the same way as Silent Hill um so every every mechanic in that game is is basically like you know it, it does um, reinforce the meaning of the game um, mm -hmm. like, and it's it's built in that way you know I wonder have you played uh, Resident Evil Revelations yet. No, I'm really keen to though. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Yeah. Um, do I wonder like what it? you'll think. Uh, mm -hmm. they tried, at least in my uh, interpretation, to have the, at least the scenario, have some sort of symbolic meaning. It's all about like, yeah. uh, s sexy, goopy jerks, uh, sexually assaulting people to me, mm. and then they turn into disgusting, sexy, goopy jerks after they've been. That's interesting. Thing. Yeah, at least that's a bit bolder, I think. Mm. For, but they're, yeah. just, they're um, not particularly... I'm the only person I know that actually thinks that. Most people mm, just no, think, oh, just really a bunch of um, I mean, obviously, it's a big part of what makes Silent Hill so effective is the, um, the sex side of it. It's Definitely something borrowing from that. Um, yeah, yeah I, think, I think Lone Survivor is quite a different animal. He's, um, he, the character himself is quite ex asexual in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but... Yeah, it's not really dealt with in my game. It's it's weird because I think so often that sex and death just go together, you know, like in uh, in theme, and um, it just you know it just it just turns out that way. But uh, um, yeah, and uh, it's it's something that I didn't really cover, but um, it's it's something that I think a lot of effective horror taps into, you know, the the body, uh, the horror mm -hmm. of the body, like yeah, it's uh, that sort of Cronenberg thing, like uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, I'm. I find like, like I find that you know body horror quite uncomfortable. Like I can't watch it really. You know, I mean, I, although I'm, I love a lot of David Cronenberg's movies, I find them incredible. I do have to like watch away from certain scenes. You know, it's yeah, I can't. Sure, you know, I certainly can't watch any torture porn or any, anything mm -hmm. like that. Like, you know, or, or in inverted commas, like you know, the Saw movies. I I've watched the the first Saw movie and that was enough. You know, it was like mm -hmm. ugh, not for me. <laughs> Even yeah. back in the day, like the yeah, the you know, Nightmare on Elm Street was pretty bad, and like um, it just makes you physically eight, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not into it actually. Yeah, I'm not um, not into really gory horror at all. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's eight, a bit of a cheat. I think. Like a level I can just about go to, you know. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they leave enough to the imagination. Yeah. I think it yeah, is a little. They bit They don't leave much, but you know, it's like yeah, they don't. <laughs> it's not quite like. Oh god, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I and I respect uh, Lone Survivor all the more for that. Honestly, if uh, you had gone to just kind of the the physical to try to give people a physical response of like repulsion yeah. and sexuality or something, it would be almost too easy. You went much more cold. Yeah. Well, I think it's the parrot. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, oh, but I think okay. the character had had called for it. Um, you know, then I would have dealt with it, but. Um, the way it was, I think the character himself was very, he was so far away from being intimate, you know, with anybody that, uh, like, he, he basically, um, yeah, it wouldn't have made sense to, to um, put that focus on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, his, his, 
his fears are all to do with, um, you know, uh, illness and getting old and dying, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, um, aging and de decrepitude and, and things like that. So, like his that one, that was the the, the focus really of, of the game. So, mm -hmm. uh, I think if it had called for it, I would have gone there. But you know, it's um, it's not an easy thing. I I, I really wish there were more games that dealt with um, sexuality in a mature way, you know, it's mm -hmm. so depressing, like, what, you know, uh, non-gamers have to look at as an example of sexuality in games, like, if you pick a random example, you know, it's like, oh, God, really? This is what's <laughs> representing... Um, we actually had uh, the creator of Papo and, and Yo on uh, not that long uh -huh. ago, and he is trying to make a game about love. Uh -huh. and, uh, very earnest in doing it in a way that's not embarrassing. I don't know if it's sexual love or not, but yeah, uh, yeah. But that's even even that's a start, you know, like actually mm -hmm. trying to do it in a, an adult way, like yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, some optimism. All right, well, it's 13 minutes. So many questions. I got to make sure I get to them, but before I do, I did want to ask you what you thought of, uh, if anything, what do you think about? Oh, now I'm blanking on the name of it. Nintendo GameCube game made by Silicon. Knights. Hmm. Oh, oh, how can I forget the name of... I, I might not be able to ask you this question. Because hmm. it dealt with sanity or lack thereof and tried to be a horror game. And it made me very sad, this game. You're talking about Gregory Horror Show, are you? Me, oh, where? No. Eternal Darkness. It's called Eternal Darkness. Thank you. Eternal Darkness. Uh -huh. I really would rather talk about Gregory Horror Show now that you've brought it up, though, because that's a. No, but I've never played it. Yeah, I've always wanted to. It looks really yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's mm. uh, it, it it balances between cute and terrible very well. Mm. But yeah, Eternal Darkness. What do you think of that game? Did you play it? Is that the one where you? That's, is that the same one where you've got like two hands coming out, like like snake type hands that um, or is that no? I'm thinking of one called The Darkness, aren't I? Oh, yeah, 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 the darkness is... Yeah, there. no, I don't uh, know if we know it. No, I don't know it, actually. It's cthulhu in. It's you're a young woman who uh -huh. reads books about uh, people kind of in past lives, and then you live those scenarios out, but there's a sanity meter where hmm. um, the more stress you go through, the less sane you become, and then it plays, yeah. like, kind of parlor hmm. tricks with you where your head will fly off and... <laughs> they tell you that the game is turned off and stuff like that. Um, they're so trying to like Kojima type stuff. Where it's yeah, like, yeah, like, and they ended up working on the Metal like Gear Solid uh, remake for the GameCube too. So they had a Kojima. Type. Ah, which I have played. Yeah, yeah. Um, which I didn't like as much as the original. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, but yeah, uh, no, I haven't played it. It sounds really interesting. I'll have to, I've got a GameCube, so I was just playing Resident Evil remake last night. So. Yeah, I'll get, oh, cool. I'll track down a copy if I can. If it's not like a quid or something, yeah. Yeah, I think it'll but be. Games to... like that, aren't they? They just they get so expensive, right? Mm -hmm. Certain ones, like yeah. Is the GameCube region locked? I can't remember. Because if not, um, I'll send you one. Probably. Okay. <laughs> probably. I'll look into it anyway. Yeah, questions. I should do them. Nice, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Damien Sommer prior guest of the show. Hi, Damien. He's uh, working on a new game called The yeah. Yog, and he um, asks any advice for an indie releasing his first commercial game? Uh, um, get some rest before the release date. Uh, really, that's it. Like, get ready. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be exhausted no matter what. Yeah, I might actually mean that. Like, get some rest before you put the game out because um, you'll find that it's actually harder after it's out than it's than before. And that's the only thing I wasn't expecting, I think, is just how tiring it was after the, the game came out. Pretty much when I spoke to you last, like, I, I basically, I, I did look back at a few minutes of the video this morning um, from last time, and I was like, oh, God, did I really look that much of a wreck? Um, I thought you looked dashing, but I do have to admit that you have a, a glow to you this time that you didn't have. Well, before. yeah, I, I, I was just, yeah, I was burnt out, I think, and... Uh, I mean, it was that was days, literally days after it came out. I think because mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. you, you were very quick to get, get hold of it. Yeah, we were excited. We we were all yeah. uh, pre in love with your game. Uh, Rough Plague asks, how do you personally motivate yourself to work alone 
on video games or projects in general? Um, yeah, it's hard uh, sometimes, but um, uh, just well, it's still a great job, you know. It's not that hard. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, do you find but, that you just are inspired and you want to move forward uh, because yeah, you know, I, kind of have an internal there's always something that needs doing, you know. I think that's the main thing, and um, and maybe for me, like because I do everything, it's like. I can um, easily go between one thing and the next, and mm -hmm. um, if I'm bored of maybe programming, then I'll go to just design for a bit, or you know, and move to to music for a bit or something. So, so yeah, that that helps. I think. Uh, so even if maybe you don't uh, do anything else apart from code, or you know, you do one discipline, then I think it's, it's probably worth like going out and I don't know finding a hobby or, you know, listening to movies for, like, whoops, um, for a few weeks or, or, you know, reading books for a few weeks if, if you've got no inspiration because, like, maybe playing games, getting outside of games is, is the best thing. So, yeah, for me, it really helps um, with, with music just because it's so different to making games that I can just switch into that and mm -hmm. um, come back refreshed maybe. Um, so maybe, yeah, just stopping doing it and actually coming back um, after doing something else. Well, it sounds like that's what you did with New Game Plus, and when you returned to New Game yeah. Plus, you had a different perspective. You weren't so focused on making sure that dual-wielding thing happened. Yeah. You let go of that and move in a slightly different direction. Yeah, that's, 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 you know, sometimes it's like you need to wait literally six weeks or whatever it was, I think, in that period, you need to wait six weeks for the answer to come. Um, and and that's all you can do. You just wait six weeks. And then, you know, when that, that answer comes, then you go back and you, you carry on work. You know, it's like, at the moment, um, I've had another break from it, mainly because of Lone Survivor, but also, like, I've had, um, I've had the, um, like, one idea in that time in you know five months I've, I've had one change and that i put in the other day like yesterday um and it was like just to make the game faster i've just been thinking about it for months <laughs> and then like you know four months and then the one thing that i thought in that time is like i need to make the, the movement faster and uh after playing some Street Fighter yesterday, I just felt the urge to try it out, and it, it worked. It was like, yeah, that was that was a good change, you know. But sometimes it might take four months just to think of that that one thing, and that's like a small thing, but it affects the whole game. Like, um, and it might mean that people like it like that little bit more, you know. It's, um, uh, yeah. So sometimes just taking a break, I think, is really really good. But just don't announce that it's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> <You're taking laughs> uh, Cynical Sandel asks, as an aspiring musician, I am always curious as to how one actually goes about composing. Jasper, mm -hmm. do you tend to just experiment and create songs on accident, or is there a sound or tune in your head that you try to replicate? Hmm. Um, yeah, often I'll start with a sound that I want to make. You know, um, I want to make some strings or like of a certain kind or, you know, a, a riff that's like a funky riff or, you know, there's some like main idea, um, you don't know exactly what it sounds like and, and, and you know, and then you just start uh, playing with a, an instrument but um, seeing what comes out, I don't know. Um, yeah, recently I've just tried to change my whole setup. So I was doing most things on the computer and, and you know, just pointing and clicking with the mouse and um, I really wanted to get a very instant way of working, so everything now is is all analog synths, and uh, I'm basically just playing everything live. You know, just like with one hand playing like one one synth, and the other hand playing the other synth. So it's just kind of trying to make it really fun and like, but you know, also challenge myself a little bit to to actually play. You know, um, and not require MIDI, which is like you know. Um, Using the computer to, to do the timing, so you actually have to play it, you know. Uh, huh. um, and so just trying to, I don't know, like, yeah, I mean, just playing, you know. Uh, um, so, yeah. Uh, oh. you... Yeah, play something, this is great. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Can you hear that? Vibrato or uh, Pornamento? I don't know what that's called, actually, but I yeah, can hear that. Not... 
I was just messing around. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and you, uh, you were telling me before that you played the uh, before the show started. You told me you played the guitar on the Lone Survivor uh, soundtrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had assumed that was fake guitar, but that's real guitar. Yeah, it's real guitar. It's um, it's just yeah. It's not a nice one. It's um, I've, I've, yeah, I've had it since I was um fourteen, and uh, I painted it. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> With like loads of acrylic paint, so it's rubbish. Um, but it, yeah, I had a nice guitar, but this is um, this is not a real Stratocaster. It's a Squire Strat, which is not like it's a cheap one. Um, I, I think it cost me a hundred pounds in like ninety two. Wow. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I made all of Lone Survivor on that, and um, it was out of tune, and I just really kept it as rough as possible. Um, I think it worked for the for the for the sound of that that soundtrack. Um, uh, whereas this is like, I don't know, I mean, I, I've just invested in this, this synthesizer, which is sort of semi-broken. But even this is like a thousand quid and it's, um, you know, it's from the 1980s. So it's like, it's, it's 30 years old. Um, uh, so you can't actually buy it anymore. So it's, you know, I'm, it just depends on the, on the, the project, I suppose, you know, mm-hmm. like, like the, this one is three grand, you know, it's like really, so it's, it, it's just, um, the old that project required like really scratchy rubbish guitar I think whereas this one like sort of needs a need like you know if you made if you made these these sounds on a on on a computer with this uh, digital synthesizer it would be very much more clean and c- clinical and cold sounding mm-hmm. uh, but this game is really going to benefit I think from the warmness uh, of the the analog. Equipment like um, it's all really elaborate. I mean, I've got this. Um, I'll just show you. Uh, but this, this, it all goes through this box as well, which is like, whoa, what is that box thing? Like um, a valve amp. Um, it's it's really weird in its sound, you know. And it's um, everything goes through it. Like it, it just uh, it, it warms the sound up and makes it sound really old. Ah. <laughs> It's sort of made by a friend, so you, you, it's the kind of thing you couldn't you couldn't recreate, you know. Your friend uh, made a warm box for your soundtrack for a new game. Yeah, plus. yeah, it's, yeah, it's Alvamp. Yeah, it's 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 really um. Well, he actually made it for himself as a guitar amp, and then um, just sold it to me like when he left the country. Uh, and it's it's really lethal. Like it's all got exposed wiring underneath. You could you could actually electrocute yourself on it quite easily. Um, but yeah, it's it's really. I don't know. It's a really nice box. Um, it's it just makes everything sound warm. Uh, well, that's yeah, speaks to yeah, the, the, my interpretation of your style, which is you're looking back at the '80s and you're looking back at back at uh, the Keep, which has like a warm uh, soundtrack to these mm. disgusting monsters, while looking mm. forward at uh, the, the the coldness that comes with the top synthesizer. And yeah, mm. you're looking at all the things at once. Yeah, I mean. I guess, yeah, I mean, because I'm not making that many games, um, maybe one every three, four years. Mm. Um, I've just broken my watch somehow. I don't know how I managed to do that. It's, look. Maybe you're psychic. My mom can really stop weird. or start a watch with her psychic powers. It's like, oh, this is, oh, this is actually a 1980s watch. Oh. oh, no, I'm sorry. I'll buy you a new watch. I don't know how it happened, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I guess it was just time. There you go. I'm sorry, <laughs> um, we have oh we're out but, of time. Uh, speaking of time, uh-huh. we're totally out of it. Oh, forward Dressen asked a good question about how did you design the extra content for Lone Survivor? Were they all cut for time or are there new ideas? But we can't answer that question mm. really. Uh, Monkey Island, have you ever considered making a point or click adventure? You can do that. Oh, yeah. You yeah, have I've already made one. Mm, I already yeah. made one in nineteen ninety five called Keith's Quest on the Amiga, and you can download it from a uh, Hall of Light and things like that. Uh, so yeah, it's an 18, 17 year old me, uh, like, um, yeah, 1995 it came out. Uh, I made it with a guy called Casper Newbolt, so it was Jasper and Casper. And uh, yeah, it's on, uh, it's on the IMDB, uh, sorry, not IMDB, I mean, um, what am I talking about, Moby Games. Um, uh, so you can find it on there, it's called Keith's Quest, and it's really bad, but uh, yeah, I made a point at Kick Adventure. Yeah. I love them. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a special genre, one that I hope sees more of a comeback. I, I think yeah. that it will. I think that. It and will. Survivor was originally a point and click. I mean, it started life as a point and click, um, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I made the, uh, the Soundless Mountain 
d make of a Silent Hill one that I, I actually changed, changed it into a survival horror. So yeah, it was meant to be a point-and-click adventure rather than a survival horror. And it still has that kind of patience to it. Um, that's what yeah. I, one of the things I love about um, point-and-click games is that they are patient with you and you have to be patient with them and you just kind of enjoy the, uh, the minutia. You can sort of play them at your own pace. You know, you can stop in a room and there's no enemies. Like, but you can just, yeah... Yeah. You can just hang. <laughs> you can exactly. let, let the get guy sit there. You know, I always like that about point click adventures. Yeah, you can just walk away from them and you're not going to die. Um, but yeah, I think like survival horror has got an element of that as well. Um, you don't, you're not always shooting. You know, mm-hmm. absolutely. Like yeah. Oftentimes, I would just go into a room in a survival horror game and just stare at it. And the enemies yeah. hadn't seen me yet, and I'm just like, oh, I'm in here with them. Yeah, I love it. Like, yeah, just replaying a Resident Evil remake, I'm, I'm checking all of the item descriptions, you know, all the, all the world descriptions. I love all that. Just searching yeah. for, like, someone's actually put a description about this fireplace, and, like, there's a light in, in a save room that's, like, the, the, the glow makes you feel a little bit of comfort. And it's like, yeah, I, re- I really like that. Somebody's taking the time to put that in, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I wish we had more time to, to put more stuff into mm-hmm. this thing. But yeah. we're two minutes over time. It went so fast, even faster than last yeah. time. Uh, they should follow you on uh, Twitter. You're at Jasper underscore Byrne. Is that right? Just Jasper Byrne on Twitter. Jasper, yeah. No underscore. Yeah. New Game Plus has a website now. It's pretty yeah, exciting. It's called com. Uh-huh. <laughs> and is that a plus symbol or the word plus? No, I don't think you can do that, actually. Yeah, yeah I don't think so. Yeah. Type out mm-hmm. plus. And Lone Survivor is coming uh, to PS Vita and PS3 uh, late this summer, maybe. And where right. can they follow the developments there? Does that have a website um, as well? Well, if you follow Curve on Twitter, I have to. I should know their Twitter. But I don't. Um, I'm sure you'll very easily find them. Yeah, you'll find them. Studios in London uh, on Twitter. Um, equally, if you follow Shahid Kamal on Twitter, like he's the uh, the PlayStation evangelist, who's absolutely amazing. He's got so many uh, um, indies to sign up with with uh, PSN recently. Like, he's a really cool guy. Uh, so if you follow Shahid Kamal on Twitter, like he's he'll basically keep you up to date with all of the you know indies that are coming out on the PSN. There's like loads of games due to come out quite soon, you know. And, uh, yeah, I'm I'm so happy that Sony. Oh, when 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 he first talked, Sony was first starting to embrace that. Mm. Uh, now they've gone full force with Hotline Miami oh. and Thomas was alone and yeah. so many games on um on PS. Yeah, there's loads. There's loads more in the works that you know I can't even I can't even announce. You know, I know, but like this, yeah, this great. It's great news all over the place. Uh, so yeah, it's it's really exciting. I mean, it's going to be like if you if you like indie games, you, you're pretty much going to have to have a Vita. Now. It's like if you're a really big fan, you know, that's where the best versions of these games are going to be quite often. I think. So yeah, hopefully, like you know, I'm I'm, I'm hoping it will uh, find an audience. Um, you know, even though it's taken a while uh, for them to get off the ground, I think. But I I really like the way Sony are, are going at the moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have uh, the utmost confidence. Uh, but I have to stop talking to you now. Yeah, it's been lovely. Uh, yeah, Jasper, thanks so much for being back on. Um, uh, you're yeah. always invited. I'm going to catch you in, in, uh, in E3 next, next week or two. Next, like, yeah, that's coming up soon. I'll, I will definitely yeah. track you down and bring the blue curtains. Wicked. All right, we'll, we'll actually meet in the flesh then. Yeah, wicked. Yeah. <laughs> thanks so much, Jasper. Take care. Thank you very much. Bye. Take care, Bye-bye. Thank you.